All right, if you've been playing Splatoon recently, which let's face it, why are you not? You probably noticed like a really weird increase in Plaza posts talking about Joy-Cons and typically more specifically Joy-Con drift. I'm gonna throw up like a decent few images like right here showing that even in my games, I've been seeing I would say 80% of all the posts in the plaza are about Joy-Cons. Everybody's Joy-Cons are breaking, there's drift, everyone's screaming at Nintendo, you make garbage controllers. People are legitimately mad, like there's like a very legitimate vocal outrage going on in Splatoon right now. And this has been consistent for like maybe a week at this point? So I started to wonder like truly what's going on here? Like why are so many people so upset about this? Are everybody's Joy-Cons like truly breaking all at once? Is there this weird Nintendo conspiracy of like everybody's warranties running out at once? Like kind of like how your microwave dies like the day after the extended warranty is over? Like maybe something like that? And as I started to look into it, it turns out this might be a pretty plausible explanation. So we are just maybe two months over the official two-year mark of the Switch coming out, which, as you might have guessed, is exactly a year beyond Nintendo's kind of baseline warranty. They have a 12-month warranty, which if anything happens, you know, you can kind of go, hey, Nintendo, my Switch is broken, fan's broken, Joy-Cons are drifting, can you fix it? And they're like, no problem, my dude, we'll take it back. But now that we're over a year out of that, there's no way that Nintendo's going to directly service that under warranty. It's just not happening, which is why it's really not a surprise that all the Joy-Cons are breaking right now, which isn't an excuse. If anything, it's even more reason to be kind of upset about this. If really not just for the fact that they're breaking, it's the way that they are breaking that's really awful. Like I mentioned earlier, a ton, like I mean every single post in the plaza is really alluding to Joy-Con drift, which is something that happens when particles, really like dust, hair, many things like that get stuck in the little compartment between the actual rubber uh, joystick itself and the actuator, the analog spring of the Joy-Con, which means that you'll just be sitting there and not moving the Joy-Con at all, but things will still be moving, like your character will still be moving, you'll still be aiming, you'll still be walking forward a little bit, which is annoying in every single facet of the word. So this Splatoon player riot is kind of justified, and it becomes even more justified when you hear other problems that the players are having. For instance, a lot of players are also reporting that their trigger buttons, their ZL and ZR buttons are getting stuck, which is annoying on its own, but it's also causing people to squid bag, which you should never do. Don't. I. Please. Okay. Like, I thought back in Splatoon 1, we agreed as a community that we wouldn't squid bag ever again. After like the first week the game came out, we are human beings. We're not cavemen. Can we please agree on that? It's annoying. Like, it's it genuinely impedes gameplay. Now, the obvious answer to this would just be to kind of say, okay, buy new ones. You know, they've been around for two years. You probably use them every single day. Buy a new one or buy a pro controller. But I don't really have to be the one to tell you that neither of those things are super cheap. A new set of Joy-Cons is like 70 or $80 and a pro controller is 70 as well. That is not chump change for the average human being, especially because most of these people playing these games are like teenagers or kids or like 25 year old college students or in my case, 20 year old college students. <laughs> Most people cannot drop that kind of cash like just out of the blue to get new controllers for their system, right? And it becomes even more egregious when you realize that Nintendo is like kind of known for their quality. Like they're kind of known to make systems that really last the test of time. Like, I mean, everybody's heard about that Game Boy that survived a bombing. I went and saw it. You can go to Nintendo New York and see this like fried Game Boy that's still functioning. If you listen to Iwata talk about their designing of the DS, he made sure the engineers made the DS so that if it fell from five feet in the air, it would survive no matter what. That's just something that Nintendo is known for. And I mean, even the fastest of Google searches will show that this is not a specifically Splatoon issue, but I'm not surprised it's happening so much in Splatoon because you're doing a lot of really complex motions, a lot of mashing, just a lot of really quick inputs that will kind of aggravate this problem. So if you're experiencing any of these issues, what can you do? The obvious answer would be just to invest in a new pair of Joy-Cons or maybe a Pro Controller, but that's not really easy or feasible for everyone. So what you can do in the meantime is actually take a can of compressed air and spray it in the little gap between the Joy-Con rubber piece and the actual internal 
actuator itself, get a lot of that dust and grime out of there, maybe clean it with a cotton swab and some really high proof isopropyl alcohol. Many users have said that helps a lot. Many users have said that's the fix that they're using right now. And many people are saying that the same goes for the stuck shoulder buttons. That's the least we can do right now. So there you have it. Now you might understand why when you're playing Splatoon, you see all these posts about people upset about Joy-Cons because they have every right to be. In my opinion, two years is way too soon for controllers like this that are this expensive to be dying in this manner or breaking in this manner. It's just annoying. And let's not forget that this is not the only issue that Nintendo has had with Joy-Cons, with the whole left Joy-Con disconnecting always type deal. There are more issues still and Nintendo just doesn't seem to want to address them or talk about them in any fashion. So in my opinion, users have every right to be upset at every level. This is poor manufacturing, which is unbecoming of Nintendo at most every level. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. I'm really interested to hear what other people in the community think about this. And while you're at it, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, why not give it a favorite? It'll mean a lot to me. Hit that subscribe button while you're down there. That means eons to me. And above all else, guys, be safe, make good choices, have a wonderful day, and peace out.